Yes, I mean, it, it all happened um, very suddenly and very uh, quickly, and we were all taken by surprise, of course, because um, no one had faced anything like this ever before. And uh, it's true that the government implemented um, a lockdown at a very early stage, and this saved uh, hundreds, if not thousands of lives. But uh, very early, uh, the churches also had to, to close down. And this meant that for a month, we were not allowed to have services at all. And for another month, we were allowed to have all services, but only up to four people could be present in the church. Uh, that is to say, the priest, two chanters, and um, an altar boy. So this was a very difficult and challenging period. And I think it helped us realize and remember two things among others first that um, it was a tricky decision and a practice with you know pros and cons as marcus pointed out um, but again i think that for many of us um the point was that we ceased to come together not in order to protect ourselves that much but in order to protect other people uh, Christians and non-Christians, churchgoers and non-churchgoers from contracting the, uh, the virus and then facing uh, perhaps fatal uh, health problems. So we acted or we had to uh, act not that much out of fear, that, than out of humble and sacrificial uh, love for other people. And second, we had to realize and remember that we don't go to church we are the church and we are the church even when we can't go and therefore we don't go uh, to the church that is to the church building but in any case we had to find ways to uh, stay together stay connected uh, in this uh, difficult uh, period and we did this we did this with the help of technology and more um, uh, specifically uh, via uh, initially Skype and then Zoom meetings. So let me just reflect this uh, a little bit. So as we know, we distinguish uh, two parts in the liturgy. Uh, the first part, which is usually called uh, the liturgy of the words, and the second part, which is the celebration of the Eucharist, Eucharist itself. So in the Orthodox Church, we tend to emphasize the, the second part, and justifiably so. But sometimes we do, we do this at the cost of the former part. Uh, and I think it is no secret that in many Orthodox liturgies, there is either no sermon, or the sermon that is delivered is of a rather poor quality. And this makes people don't really like like that much to listen to, to a poor sermon. So there is a vicious circle there. Uh, a poor sermon leads to negative reactions and this is disheartening perhaps for the, for the priest and so on and so forth. So we miss something of the power of the liturgy of the word, including the, the sermon. Uh, but now um, a, a communication via talking to each other, via listening to a sermon and then discussing about about this was perhaps the only thing we were left with, at least for a certain period. Um, that's a, a first point that I wanted to raise. And the second point has to do with um, an essential part of the Eucharist itself. So what is the Eucharist? So many theologians in recent decades uh, have emphasized the eschatological and joyful aspect of the liturgy, and this is fair enough. Provided, however, that we do not forget that the Eucharist is also essentially and perhaps primarily a sacrifice. It is our participation in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. So there is this element of sacrifice of Thysia. And as we see in the Gospels, Christ first taught and then sacrificed himself for the life of the world. And we do something similar in the liturgy. We have the readings and the sermon and then the Eucharistic sacrifice. And this is what should happen in real life as well, because we tend to say good and nice words, but this remain 
largely ineffective unless they are combined with acts of sacrificial love. So now Christians in the midst of the pandemic uh, um, were making for themselves and for all other people, um, for one another and for all other people, a huge sacrifice out of obedience to the synod, to the doctors, to the government, they ceased celebrating uh, the sacraments. And of course, the solution had its own problems, as I said. But still, the element of loving sacrifice was there, was part and parcel of this decision and this practice. There was a sacrificial phronima there. And although the new situation was painful and costly, uh, it has a sacrificial spirit which uh, did not allow it to become alien to uh, the Eucharistic sacrifice. So the fundamental way we dealt with the lockdown conditions was through having Zoom meetings for this two month period. So we used to meet twice a week at first and then once a week uh, for about an hour and a half. It was an opportunity to see each other, to deliver a talk, to discuss on the topic of the talk and so on and so forth. And uh, during our meetings, uh, I noticed uh, a few things which I would like to, to point out. First, that the turnout was impressive. We had twice as many people as we do in a normal Sunday liturgy and five times as many people as we do in our uh, talks in the church. And this was, of course, uh, the case because it's easier to communicate via Zoom from your room than to go to the building of the church itself. But also it showed that people were in a real, perhaps in desperate need for um, consolation, support, nourishment and communion. So we were forced into a kind of monastic life during Lent due to the lockdown. But this was the spiritual oasis from which we all uh, took great benefit in our kind of solitary monastic uh, ordeal. Second, it was quite impressive how quickly people were able to adjust to the new situation. I mean, even people who knew virtually nothing about computers were able to connect first through Skype and then through Zoom and attend our meetings. And thirdly, and most importantly, that God blessed this endeavor. And I think he blessed the sacrifice of his people. And I'm saying this because many people approached me both during the lockdown, but also after it, and told me how much benefit they, they derived from this from these meetings. Um, just to use an example, to, to, to give an example, a lady, a regular church goer in her late 40s, a mother of two children, said that this was the best Lent and Holy Week of her life due to these meetings. This is perhaps an exaggeration, but it shows how this endeavor worked. Of course, this had to be an exceptional emergency measure. And when the lockdown came to, to an end, our meetings also came to an end. We were now able to go to the to the church and celebrate the liturgy once again. But during the lockdown, I think first we realized the importance of worship. What we used to take for granted, I mean, um, possibility to go to church and worship God, save uh, Holy Communion, was during the lockdown an impossibility. And it made us realize how important it is and to long for it perhaps more than ever before. But second, it gave, us, it gave us an opportunity to realize the importance and the spiritual power of the liturgy of the word. And now that all this has come to an end, for, for the time being at least, I think we are able to take all this into account and from a practical point of view to complement our mm. church activities with occasional Zoom meetings as well, as actually we are doing right now. Thank you.